Welcome back to HTML5 Essential Training Series. I'm Mike King, your instructor for this tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about Styling Elements Part 2. In the previous tutorial, we looked at the inline styles that we can use in the HTML document. And in this section of the tutorial, we're actually going to look at the styling tag that's part of the HTML elements. So styling elements in HTML using CSS. So in this tutorial, we're going to look at using the style element in our HTML document. The HTML style element contains style information for an HTML document or part of that document. The actual style information is contained inside the element, usually in the form of CSS scripting. The style element has access to the global attributes available for the HTML elements. The style element is normally located in the head section of the HTML document. And inside the style element, you'll define how elements for the HTML page should display inside of our browser window. Very similar to what we did with the inline stylings, only this time they're actually going to be in the head section of the HTML document. Although you will see there are some exceptions to that that are new in HTML5. HTML documents can contain multiple style tags. And in HTML5, if the scoped attribute is not used, each style tag must be located in the head section. But you'll notice we have a couple of new attributes that are available in HTML5. One of them is the media attribute, which specifies what media device the media resource is optimized for. This became available, and not only that's available in most of the elements now, in most of our styling elements now. And the reason being is we have so many different types of ways to display browser information. I mean, we have desktops, we have laptops, we have tablets, we have phones. So now this media query element allows the CSS to style based on the type of device that's displaying the information. And you'll see that as we get further along in the tutorials, we'll actually talk about this media query and how it's used in our styling. Then we also have the scoped attribute. It specifies that the styles only apply to this element's parent element and that element's child elements, which is if we use the scoped attribute, and this is very new to HTML5, we can actually use the style tag inside the body section of our HTML document. Now we're going to demonstrate that in our in this tutorial. We're going to demonstrate how you can actually scope a particular set of styles for a parent element and its child elements inside of your HTML document. And the type. It specifies the MIME type of the actual data that's part of this. And you'll see for this particular example, this style attribute, you would use text forward slash CSS. And you'll see that a lot new to HTML5 is the fact that we're going to start specifying what the MIME types are. And for, the, for this one in particular, it's text forward slash CSS because this style attribute is, or the style element, is actually using style attributes from CSS for our document. All right, so with that said, let's move into our development environment. Let's go ahead and demonstrate some of the things that we've just talked about. All right, so let's move into our development environment. And as we do with all of our tutorials, let's go ahead and confirm that everything's set up and ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize our presentation. And the first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and look at the directory structure of what we're doing inside of our web root. I'm on Chapter 18, Styling Elements Part 2. You'll notice I've got our CSS directory is created. I've got my images directory created. And I've got my basic template.html file that's inside that root directory which are the files that we're going to use to start out this tutorial. I can tell you right up front, we're not going to be doing any styling with our imaging or using that CSS directory, but they will be needed in the next portion of the tutorial in part three as we go into external style sheets. Okay, let's go ahead and minimize that window. So we've got our web root set up. The next thing we want to do is we want to confirm that we've got our text editor up and loaded, which we do. And I want to go ahead and confirm that I've got my web root and my web browser set up to that web root and then also confirm that my Apache server is up and running as it should be with both MySQL and PHP running in the background. So, and we do this with all of our tutorials. You should be used to this by now. But again, the reason I do this because a lot of people ask me, why do you confirm that your environment's always up before you start the tutorials? You would not believe the number of emails I get for people that are having problems with the tutorials. And it turns out that the, the reason they're having the problem is that the actual server's not started to start that development environment. Not unusual, especially when you're just learning how to do this stuff, to overlook that. So I'll always emphasize that as we go through our tutorials. All right, so we've got our environment up and everything is working as it should be. Let's go ahead and bring in our basic template. So if you do have access to the exercise files, this is going to be under example one. Just going to go ahead and bring this up. 
And in my blank text editor window, I'm going to go ahead and paste this in place. I'm going to go ahead and set this up real quick, and then I'll stop it so you guys will have an opportunity to type this in if you need to. Never brings in my spaces correctly. Okay, let's do a save as. I want to save this as basic template.html inside that chapter 18 directory. And now would be a good time for you to pause the screen if you need to, to copy in, type in this portion of the file. All right, let's go ahead and scroll down so you can get the rest of the document. Again, good time to pause if you need to copy in that portion of the file. And now, let's go ahead and look at our style element inside the head section of our document. We don't have anything in this head section that pertains to styles as of yet. And as we talked about in the presentation, we can actually have a style section inside of our head element. I want to go ahead and load this basic template up so you can see that we've got our basic formatting just as we did in the previous exercise before we ended. Now, I did pull out the inline stylings that we had, obviously, because I didn't want those in here, because now we're going to actually be styling inside of our head element. So what I want to do is right below where we link to our external style sheet, which we're currently not using, I want to come down and I want to actually get my opening style tag. And I want to come down a few lines and put in my closing style tag. And this will be where I can go ahead and save that change. I think I'll do a save as. Let's go ahead and save this as chapter 18 underscore 01. Chapter 18 underscore 01.html and go ahead and save that document so we're not overwriting our basic template in the event that you have the exercise files. So now what I've got here is I've got my opening and closing style tags so that we can start to be installing this document inside of the style element of HTML. And you'll notice that as we're doing this, this is a little bit better. Actually, it's a lot better than when we did the in inline styles before. The first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and use the universal selector and if you're not aware of what that is, it's the star. I'm going to have my opening curly brace and my closing curly brace. And all I want to do here is I'm basically going to take out the padding and the margins that are default in our browsers. So the first thing I'm going to do is type in margin, colon, zero pixels, semicolon. And then I'm going to put a space and I'm going to put padding, colon, zero pixels, and semicolon. And that is actually a valid CSS command. I'm telling the universal selector, which the universal selector, selector in CSS means all the selectors. It's every selector that's available inside of CSS. I want you to take a margin of zero and a padding of zero. And when we save this document and refresh our browser window, you're going to notice it's very similar to what you saw when we did our CSS reset many tutorials ago. We're actually taking out all the built-in styling that's part of that default browser. So let's do this as save. I want to go back into my browser window. Let's refresh that and load the new chapter 18 underscore 01. And notice now that all the padding and margins are taken out of the document by using that universal selector. And this is what we mean by inline or by in head section styling using our style elements. We can actually style our document inside these style tags. So the next thing I want to do as part of our demonstration, I want to actually add some styling to the HTML element. The HTML element, if you remember correctly, is everything. It starts at the very top of our page, and it's the very last element inside of our document window. So everything that's part of this document falls inside the HTML element. So anything that I were to style based on the way that the cascade works in CSS styling is going to pertain to every element that falls inside there. So let's go ahead and put HTML. My open and closing curly braces. Now I'm going to do this one a little bit different. You'll notice how I did all this styling in a single line, separated by a space, which you can do. That's very legal in CSS. This one I'm actually going to have on multiple lines because I'm going to have multiple styles. And so to make it easier to read, I'm going to go ahead and put them on each individual lines. But if you remember from back from our white space tutorial, remember what we talked about. The more white space you add, the larger your document gets. So. You want to keep all that stuff in the back of your mind as you're doing this. So I want to put a width, 100%. I want to come right down below that. I want to put a background color. And I want to put a background color of pound sign CCC. That's going to be a light gray based on my hexadecimal color characters. I want to put a font family. 
and this font family, once I put this in, because of where this is inside the cascade, this is going to apply to every element that's on my page. I want to put Arial, comma, Helvetica, comma, and then sans serif with a hyphen. And I want to end that with a semicolon. And then I want to come down one more line and put color. Whenever I put color inside of um, my curly braces in CSS, I'm referring to the color of a font. So whatever font I happen to be using, when I start setting up the color, I'm, when I talk about color by itself, without anything else, without background or anything around it or border, I'm actually talking about the font color. And this is going to be a pound sign, 03F which is a, um, it's a, it's a dark blue. I'm going to end that with a semicolon. I want to go ahead and save these changes. Again, we'll keep this as the standard 18-01. Now, keep in mind what we've done. We've set the width of the HTML document. We've set the background color of the HTML document, the font family, so our font style should change. And we've actually given the font a color inside of our style tags. So when I refresh this browser window, we should see a lot of changes occur inside the document itself. And we haven't changed the name of the document. We just saved that over our chapter 18 underscore 01. So if I refresh it, you'll see all those changes take effect inside of our document window. And keep in mind, since I gave this a width of 100%, that's 100% of the browser window. So as I resize this browser, it's going to resize with it. You're going to see in a minute how we can actually control how our elements display inside the HTML element. And that will be part of the next demonstration as we work further along with our style element in HTML. All right, so one other thing I'd like to demonstrate while we're talking about using the style element in HTML is how we actually set up our pages again, because we're going to be getting into some styling as we design this website as we get further along in the tutorials. I want you to understand a little bit about CSS, but do keep in mind, this is not a CSS class. We're going to just go through high level stuff to help you understand as you see me styling things in future tutorials so that you have a grasp of what I'm doing with CSS. There will be a whole set of tutorials on CSS in the CSS portion of the website. I highly recommend if you're really going to get serious about web development that you view those tutorials. The next thing what I want to do though is let's go ahead and look at how we would style the body section. Keep in mind now we've styled the HTML element. Remember the HTML, HTML element is the root element of our page. That's the very first and very last thing that we do inside of HTML when, we put it, when we're putting together a web page. The next thing I want to do is I want to style the body element. That's where everything that displays in the browser window is input. So by styling that browser, that body element, this element right down here, we're actually starting to style now what we actually can view inside the, the browser window itself. So the first thing I want to do is I want to type the body element with its tag. It's open and closing curly braces. And again, we'll put this on multiple lines so it's easier for you to read. I want to put in a width setting. And the width setting, I'm going to make it a percentage. And keep in mind, remember we gave the HTML element 100%. We gave it 100% because we wanted it to take up the entire browser window. It doesn't have to, but we wanted it to, and we wanted to give that gray background color, so we had a color for it. What I'm saying now is, okay, body element, I want you to take up 80% of your container. Because the body element is inside the HTML element, it's going to be 80% of the width of the HTML element. So it's going to take up 80% of that. The next thing I want to do is let's give it a different background color. So I want to give it a background color. I'm going to come down here. I want to give it a white background color. So I'm going to use my pound sign, FFF. That's the hexadecimal equivalent for white inside of our color. And as I said earlier, we're going to have a tutorial on colors, how to set these up using different types of values. Let's go ahead and save that. I want to save this as underscore 18 underscore zero two. So I'm going to do a save as, and inside your exercise folder, you should see chapter 18 underscore 02 if you have access to those. I'm going to go ahead and save that. You can pause if you need to copy this. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and load that 02 file. So let's go back to our root, refresh the browser window, and bring up 02. You'll notice now that I've got something that's 80% of the width, and it has a background color of white. That's our body element. So it's inheriting everything that we've done in the previous styling. But now the body element, because I'm getting more specific, and specificity is what they call it in um, CSS, I'm becoming more specific as to what I'm styling. Now I'm actually styling just what's inside the body element itself. One thing I do want to do, and I don't know if you remember, we actually covered this in an earlier tutorial, I want to center this. 
I need to center the body inside the HTML element because it'll stay at 80% if I stretch it, but you notice it stays butted up against that left edge. I don't want to do that. I want it centered in our screen, so I want to come down below my background color, and I want to put in a margin left auto, and right below that I want to put in a margin right auto, and if you remember from the earlier tutorial, we actually talked about this. Let's go ahead and save those changes. This actually calculates a margin on each side of the body element based on how big the parent element is. And it divides it into it. It actually splits it between the two sides. So once I save this and refresh the browser window, it'll actually calculate the differences between both sides and split them. And it'll stay centered inside that window. And you can see as we resize that that body element is now staying centered inside the HTML element. And that's how we center a lot of our pages. One other thing I would probably do before I close this portion of the tutorial, let's put a margin on the top. Not a big one. I just want to kind of get it a little bit away from the top of the HTML element. And let's give it 15 pixels. I want to save that. Refresh that browser window and it moves that body element 15 pixels down from the top. And this is how we would begin to set up our pages in our HTML document. All right, so looking at that style attribute, there's one other thing I want to demonstrate that we actually talked about inside of our presentation, and that's using the scoped attribute with our style attribute. Up until HTML5, the style attribute was used in the head section of the HTML document. We could have multiple style attributes, or I'm sorry, we could have multiple style elements, but they were always maintained in the head section of our document. With the introduction of HTML5 and the new scoped attribute for the style element, we can now include style elements inside of our body element, and they'll pertain only to the parent element and the child elements of the section or of the area that they're located in. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. If I wanted to change the formatting of this particular H1 element, styling elements in HTML part two, I could actually put a style element inside this section and that style element would only pertain to the parent and children of that section element. So let me, let me demonstrate what I'm talking about because it's a lot easier to see it, understand it if you see it, than me talking about it. I can actually put my opening and closing style tags inside this section. And I can tell this style element that you're scoped using that scoped attribute. Remember we talked about that scoped attribute in our presentation. Now I could say, all right, all the H1 elements that are inside the scope of this style element, I want all of you to have the color of red. And we'd enter it just like we enter anything else in CSS. I want to give you a color of red. And I want to come down and give you a font size. Notice I'm getting my code hitting, just like I would if any inside any other CSS document. Let's give you a font size of 1.7M. I want this to be a very obvious change so that you can see what I'm talking about. Let's do a save as on this particular document. And we're going to save this as underscore 18 chapter 3, 0, 3. I'm going to go ahead and save that. You can pause this if you need to type this in. So now when I go and load this document, remember we have multiple H1s inside our HTML document. I've got an H1 tag here. There's my opening tag, my closing tag. I also have an H1 tag down in this section. And what I'm doing is by scoping this style, I'm only scoping inside this section element. So it should only pertain to this H1 tag because it's limited to the scope of that section. So I've done my save as. Let's go ahead and go back here. Refresh my browser window. Let's go ahead and open up that underscore zero three file, chapter 18, that we just created. And you'll notice now that that red text and that font size of 1.7 is only pertaining to the scope of this one H1 element. This is um, scoping the style attribute inside the body section of our HTML page. Now, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, it's kind of cool that we can do this because, I mean, a CSS has come a long way. But this is not how I would normally do this. First off, it's very seldom that, that I would want to style something inside of a section or inside of a portion of my website that would be unique just by itself. That very seldom happens because we want consistency in our web pages. So what I would normally do, and you're going to see that in the next portion of this tutorial when we get into part three, when we start looking at CSS documents, I would probably have assigned this H1 a class and then assign that class inside my external document and then just call the class to style the element. 
To me, that's a better way of doing it. This is new. This attribute is new to HTML5. I haven't quite seen how it's going to be used yet. I haven't found a need to use it myself yet, but I just wanted you aware that it's there because it is brand new. And it is. And actually, looking at where we've come from over the last five years, it actually is kind of cool that they're getting that specific now as to how we can style these things. I just haven't seen a need for it yet. All right. Let's go back and finish up this tutorial so we can get into the next section of the tutorial where we're going to talk about external style sheets and how we use those to style our documents in HTML. So we've looked at two different ways so far that we can actually style our elements in HTML. We looked at the inline styles and we just finished looking at the style element itself and how we can use the style element in the head section of our document and now inside the body section of our document using the scoped attribute to style portions of our HTML page. In the next tutorial, we're actually going to look at how we use external style sheets to style our elements. And I'll tell you right up front, external style sheets is the most popular way of doing it. It's the most efficient way to do it. We, um, we, we set up external style sheets based on the pages that we're using. I mean, it makes it very, very easy to maintain the styling of a website by using external style sheets if they're properly set up and properly utilized. And in the next tutorial, we're going to talk about how we use those tutorial or how we use those external style sheets and set them up for styling our HTML pages. So I hope you enjoyed Styling Elements Part 2. I look forward to seeing you in Part 3 of this tutorial series where we look at styling elements using external style sheets in HTML.